with Sarah and welcome back to part two of our summertime ATCs. Now I've already, in part one I created the background and I'm just going to cut these apart. An ATC is an artist trading card and it is two and a half by three and a half. So I've set these all up so that they're going to go vertically and I'm just going to cut them in. So this is already three and a half and now I'm just going to go to two and a half and see what we get. I really love how it turned out. Um, I used some beigey, creamy colors for the sand and basically just like a sapphire and a um, like a metallic turquoise. Let me see which side of this I like better. I think I like this side. Because um, so I have four. I got four out of that paper so I can pick my favorites. Uh, I think these three will be good. And I've already, <clears throat> in, the, in the first half of the video or part one, I shared that I'm using this Lawn Fawn stamp set. This is called Life is Good. And I've taken the images from here and stamped them out onto different types of uh, scrapbook paper, no I didn't use any scrapbook paper actually, uh, book pages and mostly I'm using, which I'm loving, um, envelopes. These are, uh, they're called, they're called, they're called, uh, I don't know, like a safety envelope. I said it in the other video because it was on one of them. And I've found as many colors as I can and I've stamped it out on those. And so we're going to now use Mod Podge, which is my go-to, uh, it's out here, um, adhesive to do collage. And you can use whatever adhesives you want to use. And we're going to design these little scenes because I shared with you guys that I was in love with, I just took this design from the, uh, art journal page that we did for June and created ATCs and I used my stickles and micro beads. I just love it. So I'm going to use all those things for these. So let's go ahead and start. We have this little guy here and I'm just going to adhere. Let's do the sandcastle first. So I'm going to put a sandcastle going to put a sun. The only thing I used, I used a punch for my circles, for my sun. And I'm going to put a sun on each page. And I'm going to try and move things around because when I did these, they were all set up the exact same way. So I want to try and uh, hopefully, yeah, I want to make sure I stay in the shot. I'll move that back a tiny. Um, so yeah, so this is a sand castle. And I have a little hill of sand here. We'll see if I want to use that. Not for this one, I don't think. Um, just put that down. I have this bucket and pail. A pail with, I guess it has sand in it, so I'll have to color that in sand color. And then a sun. Some clouds, or a cloud at least, right? And, you know, your, your sun couldn't be coming, peeking out from the cloud. Maybe I'll do that just to change it up a little bit. I have seashells in here. Um, let's see. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and adhere some of these. So let's see, I have another one that I'm going to use these two palm trees. And this one I think I was going to use the hill. I cut a couple different hills. This is from a map page and it's just the right color for a, a hill. And I'm going to put two. In the last video I shared that I, how I stamped these out and I cut this out and put the green paper for the foliage. So I'll put two palm trees, maybe up a little higher. Uh, again, I'm going to put a sun. 
and we'll move it over and put it in the middle this time maybe um, clouds and maybe just shells but I have this little crab I think I have to put this little crab on here he'll be here and then I'll put words I'm gonna use Tim Holtz words so I'll put some seashells I have a starfish which I'll color these in with paint but I have this cool starfish I have some what are these called sand dollars yeah I have sand dollars so you know I'm just gonna and then I have two different shells I think like a conch shell I have the fan looking shells and these are all just images from that stamp set so um, I stamped out like about two of each shell and oh I forgot about clouds on this one Fettered. I don't know if I want to put Federer. I don't know what that means. I don't think it's very beachy though. So we'll put that there. So see? Um, then on the last one I have this lighthouse. So I'm going to just put him maybe right in the center. I kind of like it off to the side and I'll put this little crab guy I used another piece of map to for his shell so I'll put him he's the same though um, I have a different crab shoot I didn't realize that that's okay it's okay if they're the same um, This should be more in the background, and he should be, like, that's a pretty small lighthouse if he's a crab. Um, but some shells. But that's what it's going to look like, pretty much. Maybe I'll put this one over here, then. I have a starfish again, so another starfish I think needs to go here and a sand dollar here. So something like this. So I'll go away and I'll adhere all this with Mod Pod. You don't need to see that. That's not um, impressive or anything. So when I do, I'll save how I do the little, you don't need to see it, it's not rocket science, I just use a little brush, I'm going to use this little brush, and just adhere everything down, and maybe give it a full coat of Mod Podge when I'm done, alright, so I'll be back, and I'll, everything will be adhered, alright, so I'm on my last one, and so the crab is all red, but his shell I did with a little bit more of a white paper, one of the uh, envelopes for sure and I just cut it out and then I'm placing it on top as best I can and it's not working out oh you know what that's just map underneath okay the line over here but it's just map uh, what else did I want to put on here some shells definitely the sand dollar so This is a little more tedious than the end is the best, guys. When you put all the sparkly stuff on there, oh man, it's so awesome. I think I want to put one of these shells up here. Got to kind of hold it down a little bit. Oop. Like that. And then, do I want to put one more shell? Or a starfish? No, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. So I have... I didn't use this crab. 
but that's okay. So I didn't use everything. Just put that in water. I'm just going to wipe my... I have a lot of uh, glue on here now, probably. I should have put down a piece of um, scrap paper to collect all the glue, because now I get glue all over. Well, Mod Podge. It just peels off, usually, so... All right, um, so we've got to let that dry, but this one's been sitting up there. I'm going to cut away the bits that went over the edge, a couple of palm tree leaves, cloud, a little piece of the sun. I like when the design bleeds over because then it kind of fills out the ATC nicely. So that's one. I like that one. That is so cute. Now wait until we color it. It's going to be so good. This one's still really wet. Let me cut some of this. I did this little cloud over the edge and this shell. This one kind of looks plain, but I think it'll be okay because um, it doesn't have a critter. See, I could put this little crab here. Why not, right? Or maybe up here. <clears throat> you know? Why not? I like it. I think I'm going to add him to that. And then this one, I have this little guy. This looks kind of naked too. Maybe I should put a seashell. That's not a seashell, this one. I don't have him. Like right here. I think that needs to go there. So I'll add that, and then I'm going to come back. This one just doesn't, oh, this one's great. All right, so I'll come back, and I will have everything dry and ready to paint. Yes, all right, I'll be back. I really can't decide which one I like better. They're so cute. Okay, this gets me so happy. All right, so all that is done. We are going to now paint, and make everything start to pop. So before I float anything, which is just to bring it out like the shading and the highlighting, I'm just going to base in my suns. I'm going to put some uh, pearl white on the clouds. And, oh man, here it is. I'm going to put, hmm, I think I want to Oh, I can use burnt sienna for my palm trees. So I'll put those three out and we'll see what happens there. So I'm going to get a little brush, like a number three round, number two round. And I'm going to water down. And I am using, this is like a very bright neon yellow, but I like it. It's what I use on my sons here too. Because I'm going to shade them. So I'm just going to cover. And the other thing is you want it to be sheer. You, you want to be able to see the paper. That's the fun part about mixed media. Having some of those details from your background show through. So in this case, it's just the paper we used to create those suns. And at first it looks super bright, but it calms down when it dries. Uh, what else? So yeah, I could probably just finish one with you guys. And then, but like, see, because I can work, I'm very fast. So I can work fast. And let's do all the clouds. And this is Martha Stewart, um, just white pearl. But Deco Art and other brands make metallic paints, they call them. And pearlescent paints. They make satin finish paints. 
So I just happen to have these in my stash and Nurse Tara introduced me to these. Do you guys know Nurse Tara on YouTube? She's a um, paper crafter. She does beading. She does a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah, she was the first one to min mention that I saw the Martha Stewart pearlescent paints. Um, so I went and had a look and then since then because they're a bit more expensive. I did get a bunch on clearance one time at Joann's, uh, but they have metallic and pearlescent paints in other brands as well, so. All acrylic paint, this kind of craft paint, it's good enough. You don't, you know, we're not making masterpieces necessarily, you know, something that has to live through the ages. So what else could I paint? The shells could be, you know what, I'm going to paint the sand dollars the same color. Keep it sheer. I don't want it to be covering up. Uh, I don't have a sand dollar on that one. And what else? I mean, this little guy could be... I think he would look good white too, pearlescent. Uh, do I have, yep, I have one of them on here. And it also pulls the white down from the clouds into the design. So that's a good, when you're, when you're creating a piece and um, part of composition is, you wanna do that sometimes. Um, so your eye travels around the piece. This shell I'll do a different color. Um, I'm probably going to color in every other stripe with straight white if I can. But while I have that burnt sienna out, let's... I think I'm going to do a very light wash again. And I'm just mixing water. The water that I have on my brush, I just pull out of the puddle to get it sheer. And I'm just going to paint the tree trunks with that. Kiwi hears me talking, I'm pretty sure. That's my bird. Um, what else could be that color? We're going to shade with that color. So that's the next thing I want to do. I'm going to do the inside of this door. That color. I could just shade it, but I think I'll just paint it in. I'm going to do the inside of the wind. Oops, I just went into the white. Inside of the windows, the same color too. Because it is a sandcastle, there wouldn't be any light coming from in there. If it was a people castle, I might put yellow in the windows to make it look like light coming from inside. And then I'm going to also add, um, I think I'm going to use the um, trail tan, is it called? I'm going to paint this sand in the bucket with opaque trail tan. This is one of the colors that I used um, to do the background with. So it's definitely one of the sandy colors, but I want this to be opaque try and cover up the blue. So I might do another coat on that. And that was a little watery, but I'm used to doing a couple of thin coats rather than one. Um, so let me get some white, straight white. Uh, maybe I'll use the buttermilk first because that's a little more of a, of a color than white and it might help me cover the red better. I'll do the roof black, white, white, white. Yeah, I just want those to be. So I barely put any water in my brush this time. Don't really want the red to show on this part. So I am trying, I didn't want to add water to thin down the paint. I want it to be opaque. And you know me, I'm not the most patient person. And 
one thick coat. That's pretty good. I like that. Lighthouses are all different colors. I googled it and they're all different colors. They have all different stripe shapes like one stripe uh, straight around. Some are diagonal. They're all different. I think I'll make that door blue. I'll probably paint, let's paint the light part yellow. I don't know if this is going to be too bright and if it's even going to show. I'm going to paint the whole thing because it is a lighthouse, right? Um, what about his shell? I think I want it to be like a pink. Let me think. The starfish has to be kind of like orangey or like a peachy color. How about, this is too pink. I'll find a peach. You know what would be a good color? It's, it's my, hold on, I know it's right here on my desk too. Well, near my desk. It's one of my... What is her name? This is Jane Davenport. This is a better one. This is kind of more orange. So I'll use both of those. I like those. I just happen to have that over there. So, um, let me think. I think the starfish would look really nice this color. This is not even, these are her flesh tone colors, but they're really good quality paints and I'm going to put this on something. Let's see, yeah, I think I'm going to do his seashell this. It's like a coral pink. It's not a real, real pink. Maybe I'll add a little bit of the orange to it actually. So let me do all the starfish and I am going to make it sheer. So I'm mixing water into the paint. I don't want, this is heavy body paint, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to do it. Maybe a little bit of pink. No, it's a little, yeah, I like it. What do you think? Can you see? Aren't they getting cuter and cuter? I get excited, you guys. But you know what's going to be the funnest part? Adding the stickles and the microbeads is going to be the funnest part. The funnest. I'm just grabbing a little pink. And I'm going to grab more pink because I'm going to do this shell. I don't like that. That's too. That's better. Just calm it down. The only shell I didn't paint was this guy. And cock shells can be. Mm, they can be all different colors. I, maybe I should do it like a. I don't know. What else did I paint? Because I'm going to shade this. I'm just going to shade. You know what though? Let me do my crab with a, ooh, you know what I just saw? This is neon pink ultra fine glitter paint. I'm going to paint the conch shell with this. I just feel like it. I just saw it. It's my beach scene and I am going to paint the conch shells. I don't think I got any glitter in there because I haven't used it in so long. Probably the glitter isn't even to the surface. See how this one turns out. This is by Americana. Decorware Americana, yep. I think I see little glitters in there. I'll do this one again. And because we put Mod Podge all over it, you can you have time to wipe off. 
But yeah, make sure you give that a shake if you have any glittery type. I see glitter though. Ooh. Cool. What else? I think I'll do another coat of the sand color. And then I think we're good. All right. I'll do another coat. I'm going to do white over this and I got to do it like a I'm going to do like a charcoal roof. Let me get charcoal. I love that color. I'll do a charcoal roof on that. My little number three round will get me through this whole piece. And that's okay if I cover up the red and make it opaque, but if it's a little sheer, that's okay too. I can't see. Sometimes that my lights have such a glare. That's good enough. And then, where's my straight white? Here. Now, see on the lighthouse, I forgot, there's little windows here. So I can definitely put a little light on in there. Like that. And I think I'll do the door like a blue. I, I might have a little blue on my... No. I, sometimes if you peel these little, yep, I have a tiny bit of blue here. Babe, what you doing? Nope. He's enjoying his day off. That's what he's doing. See, I don't want it to be... That's good. Ooh, it almost turned purple. Because there's red underneath it. So let me go over that buttermilk with white now and it should turn much much whiter oops a round brush isn't as easy to keep straight lines although it's not horrible um, I generally would use a flat brush with a nice chiseled edge and that helps you get in those corners nice and straight so if I were base coating um, a decorative painting piece, I tend to base coat with a flat brush. I like it and it really makes it quick and neat. You get a lot more ridges when you use a round brush, but this is so tiny. Ah, look how white it is now though. Better, right? All right. Oh, I can see glitter on my little shell. It's a shame I don't have one on here. Maybe I should put the last. Yep, I can see glitter on there. All right, watch what we're going to do now. I'm going to do a little shading. While I have, I'm going to go to a small-ish brush because I tend to be a heavy hand. And this is so small, it helps me if I use a smaller brush to not get out of control with my color. But I'm going to take some of this burnt sienna. That's the darkest brown color that we used. And I'm going to float some of that to create shading in areas. So on top of the hill, behind my little crab, Right, a little shadow that gives depth. And we'll go across the bottom. Now, a float, let me just do it. Every video I make, I do this. Let's corner load. I went into my water, blot on paper towels, corner load, and then push the color into the brush, floating across the bristles from one side to the other, not all the way to the other. You want water on the other side. I'm going to go under the palm fronds. 
and I just use where I loaded my brush to pick up more paint because I tend to have enough water in my brush that I don't need to reload every time. I ran out so I go back into water, blot on a paper towel, corner load into paint, and you really want your floats nice and light for this technique, for this style because I don't want to lose all that background. I'm going to go down the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to use this brush. I was going to go bigger. I'm going to go across the bottom edge. And we're going to go under the crab. You don't want to pick up what you just did, so if you can help it, stay away from where you just floated until it dries. Mm, we want to go under the palm tree, like, oh, under the starfish, or around them, under the palm tree, under the shells, just a little, and then I'll probably go down the sides too. But watch what happens when we do this uh, castle. I'm going to shade all on the castle too to start making it dimensional. So hopefully I'll be able to stay right here and set things behind. So we're going to come up here because this bit right there where the door is is the furthest forward toward us. So now we kind of set that in the front, right? I'll come back, but I could go underneath the, the roof here. I'll go under all the other roofs too. We want to go under the castle itself to set it onto the beach. So And I'm going to go um, around some things with my black pen, too, because it just, a lot of these, because I stamped them with a stamp, an actual printed stamp, have the black line already, which is great, because when I did, I'll show you, when I did my sailboats, I cut everything out. These weren't stamped. I created the shapes so there were, were no black lines around anything. Actually for the waves I used those scissors. These. It was so fun because I never use these but I have them. So that was my waves. But yeah so then I really needed to outline everything to just make it pop. Um, what else? Um, around the top of the pail and around the top of the castle as well. Mm. Kind of everywhere that it, you know, it creates depth then. Um, but I, like I said, I don't want to lose all the lightness, so I'll highlight the tops of the beach. What about this? This could go um, down the sides here, especially. Now, even though I put a hill on this one, the paper ends right there, I'm not going to put a line there because I don't think, it, I don't want that to be like a, um, a stark line. I'm just going to go up over like this to create like a, you know, that there is a hill there. And along the bottom, I need more paint. Mm, 
up down both sides of the lighthouse underneath this little guy underneath Krabby. I'm just waiting to do um, the lighthouse just until it dries up there a little bit um, under the starfish and under the lighthouse itself so I kind of just made the hill part of the background uh, down the sides now of the lighthouse too much. I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to the sky color and we're going to go around, actually let me just one more thing, the suns I'm going to shade with this color, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is one of my favorite browns, it's like a reddish brown but I love it and because this cloud is in front of the sun I'm going to shade it on that side. Um, this one doesn't have anything in front of it, so I'm going to go towards the back, kind of over this way. And this one is has a cloud in front of it, so it will be shaded that way. You could actually shade the light part of the lighthouse. I mean, I'm getting a little carried away, you know, but it's all fun to me. All right, so that's that. Now we can go into the blue, and I think I'm going to just use the sapphire, although I'll bet you Payne's gray would look so good, because Payne's, is this the sapphire? I think this is the sapphire. No, that's charcoal. Uh, I don't have any sapphire that's not all dried up, but you just want to go around the clouds to kind of set them into the background as well. But aren't they turning out cute, you guys? Oh, man. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish up all the shading, and then I'm going to come back and show you how I add um, stickles and uh, micro beads. And I think I'll put paint around the edges before I do all that and any of the other type of dimensional mediums that I want to use to kind of get it looking like that. It's so cool. All right, I'll be right back. Okay guys, the last step after painting everything, shading it, is to use your pen. I'm using the Uniball Vision Waterproof Fine Line Pen. Um, I just bought a whole big box of these on Amazon. But I really love it. It's a it's a permanent more um, pen, and it it does really well on mixed media. So I've just gone around most of the things. I didn't retrace a lot. Like if the lines look black enough, I kept it. I didn't go over it. But definitely, you're gonna do um, the clouds, unless you use a stamp that has a nice line around it. I mean, you know, use your judgment. You don't have to go around anything. I just think it, with mixed media, it's definitely a cool look. Um, I think I'm going to go around the this roof because, boy, it's crooked. Um, no, because, boy, I did that really crooked. I'll put a door. I'll put a, a doorknob. And I just like went around the shells because sometimes the um, that pearlescent paint kind of you lose the the it's so it covered the black lines is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just outlining. I'll outline here, make it nice and sharp. Since that, oh, we didn't go along our horizon line. 
I went around the edges with gold paint. Uh, what else do I want to do? I don't want to go under that, but I'll like go around this guy, make sure he's showing up. I think I want to bring out some more of the seashell he has. And so you just use your own judgment, but I think I'm just going to darken that up. Boy, I wish I didn't make my roof so crooked. There, fixed it. Um, and maybe just... Hi, Kirby. My doggy came to see me. So that's it. But now I'm going to go away and we're going to do a part three so that... So everything is done. But wait till you see what we're going to do next. We're going to add stickles, micro beads, and not perfect pearls. It's called liquid pearls. That's what it is. So that we'll be able to get a dimensional effect like this. Also, maybe I'll grab some words. Darn, I forgot about the words. Um, but maybe I'll sneak a couple words on here. Just some fun words, all right? So I'll be back for part three. Thanks for watching.